Good evening, good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Real Talk Kingdom Discussions with Ace Martin. It's great to be back in the building, man. Great to have you guys here today. Uh, we just shot one of our regular members, uh, Pastor Lionel Johnson, but you know he's helping doing the baseball thing, but I know in spirit he is here with us. Um, we had a wonderful, wonderful lesson this week, and it's entitled uh, Stop, Drop, and Worship. Stop, drop, and worship. If you have an opportunity to go ahead and follow along with us, if you have the Bible app on your phones already, go ahead and go to the plan, drop, and worship, and you can follow along with us. So as we give you a few minutes to log on live, enjoy the wonderful sounds of Trey McLaughlin and the sounds of Zamar. Without breath 
That's my boy right there. That's my jam, man. That was tight, man. Trey McLaughlin, man. Y'all go ahead and download Sounds of Zamar. It's not a new album. Been out a few years, but uh, I ain't heard it in a while, man. That song is, is nice, man. I, I really enjoyed that. Get you in the, in the Repair right your enamel with Pronamel Repair. Our most advanced formula lets you brush your vital minerals to, to actively repair oh. and strengthen enamel. So you don't just brush to clean, you brush to build. Pronamel Intensive Enamel Repair. All right, all right. Man, thank you guys for joining us live again. Uh, uh, flip it around on me like this here because we don't, I don't have my cameraman today. I think they got football practice and stuff like that, so we're going to do the best we can, but I didn't want to miss another week. We missed last week, and uh, but it was bad weather and all that stuff like that, but we had a wonderful Easter weekend in between that time. Man, uh, I also had a birthday on yesterday, man, so I thank the Lord for allowing me to see a new birthday, a new year. So oh, yeah. thank you, thank you for that. Uh, glad to have you guys on. How y'all feel today, man? Good. Hey, man. Good. Awesome, 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 awesome. Awesome. Right. That's a blessing, man. Um, when 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 y'all got the subject for this lesson, this particular plan, stop, drop, and worship. Just somebody share some insight on how you, what, what what the first thought that came to mind. Anybody? Yeah, whenever I'm in a trial, it makes me think. You know, the type of stop, drop, and worship. You know, remember. The God I serve and the situation that I'm in is only temporary. That's real. That's good. That's good stuff, man. Good yeah, stuff. Brought me back to man. Uh, is uh, praise is uh, expression mm -hmm. that we express to God, but worship is an experience with God. So whenever we want to experience uh, the goodness, the goodness of God in our life. Follow that worship. That's real. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Good. Awesome. Awesome. My, my awesome. Was, uh, this 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 gonna be another good one. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Well, I ain't gonna lie. When I when I saw it again, like I told y'all before, um, I just kind of let the Lord lead me in those uh, situation. I don't really have no game plan on how I'm gonna go about it. I just kind of. Just know it'd be time to get a lesson out, and I just kind of yeah. started going through it. And when I go through it, uh, some some kind of way he points my finger on a certain subject, and I read through it a little bit, and I say that's the one. So that's kind of where we at with it. Um, um, so glad to have you guys on, man. Again, if you hadn't had a chance to subscribe to our real uh real talk with H Martin page, that's on Facebook, like our page and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the same name, Real Talk with H Martin. Uh, we would appreciate that. We're trying to grow the YouTube platform. Um, right now, I'm trying something different with my video. I got a, a two cameras set up, one just to record, the other one while we live. Uh, I want to see how this goes because I can edit the one that's just recording, and I can edit and put some graphics and some different music yeah. in. So I'm going to try that, see how that works, and then it'll be easier when I have my camera person here so I can sit down where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, but right. I'm going to try to do all that while I'm back here. This is post-production in the back, but I'm hosting <laughs> at the same time, man. Hosting at the same time. So thankful, thankful, thankful. I got one of my partners in there, man, uh, the shop manager for Mirage 2 Slim, the barber watcher. Uh, glad to have you on while you're on. I don't know if you'll be able to watch the whole show, but whatever you can watch, we're glad that you chimed in and tuned in to Real Talk with H. Martin, man. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Uh, Man, um, for Easter, man, I don't, I don't, I don't want to slide, slide right past that without acknowledging just exactly uh, what the significance of that day. And uh, I want you guys to share something about that, too. And, uh, of course, I will. And then we'll go ahead and proceed. We, this is a six-day plan, and we'll just do days one through three today. But um, but, but, but before I say mine, I'm just going to switch this camera around. I'm going to let these guys talk first, and then I'll kind of share what, what, what once you really, really... Uh, allow your mind to focus on just what happened on that on that hilltop on Calvary. Uh, if you you, get, you just got to get a little deeper though, just think about it. And um, I know a lot of you have seen movies that try to depict it. You have seen and read uh, books that have depicted it. And and so if you're a believer, then all you have to do is just really imagine yeah. and imagine the sacrifice that was 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 done for us. That was you know uh, on that on that on that hilltop when. Nothing else could be done to salvage us. Nothing else could be done to save us. Nothing else could restore us. It had to happen just the way it did. And okay. to have a Savior uh, like Jesus Christ, the uh, only one that could have done it, I'm just thankful for that. So, man, you guys go ahead and chime in real quick before we get past uh, past this part. When I think about man, what our Lord and Savior, uh, 
did for us, man. He, he bridged the gap uh, back from between us and God because it was a gap that was there, you know, and uh, through Adam's sin, you know, it, 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 it formed a, a wedge between us and God. It was a gap. But, you know, what he did, you know, on that Good Friday and, and then rising again on that on that third day morning, man, with that resurrection morning, with all power in his hands, man, you just make you feel like, you know, it's worth, life is worth living, man. That's awesome. Life is worth living, you know. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I know you got some, Minister Therese. I know you got some. Just thinking about it, <clears throat> I look at it like, I have a hero. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at it like, man, I am inspired by my God, the incredible. Uh, I look at it as a walk of uh, humility, uh, humbleness. I look at servanthood, mm -hmm. and I, I think about it, I look at the love. Like, mm -hmm. my God, that's a lot of love that, that, that we have uh, in God and in Christ. Um, in Jesus, I look at it as, man, that is really mind blowing. Uh, the fact that he dealt with the pain, he dealt with the betrayal on his way to fulfill the prophecy. He already knew what was at stake, but he still pressed. I look at it as love, agape love. All right, that's real. That's what I look at it as. It's it's inspiring and, and, and I get very emotional because he didn't have to do it. Right. Yeah. Right. He have the power. He have everything that he have could pretty much everybody could drop if he wanted them to. But he went on because he loved us. That's so right. God they love. Awesome, man. That's awesome. Brother Chuck. Yeah, I think it's behind you. That's all right. Yeah, I think of it as um just the whole the Good Friday, Easter Sunday, I look at it as the Good Friday, he died for my sins. He died for my struggles, my addictions, my mistakes, my failures. Me falling short, he died for that. And now I look at it as when he rose, he defeated death. So he gave me a way to live with him again. He gave me a way to renew myself and to have a purpose of living. Because think about it, we all was born and we knew we were going to hell you know we weren't we wouldn't really have a purpose to live because right. we know our, in, our downfall regardless That's because right. he rose again he gave us that new path that new way that, that purpose right so i think for me that that just goes to show like you said agape love because that's he did the ultimate ultimate sacrifice yeah agape love is considered the most it's the highest form of love from god to man and from man to god it's a reciprocal love but it's unconditional um, and it's undeserving, but it's unconditional, and it's the highest form of love. There's so many adjectives to describe it, but that's exactly what it is, man. So I, I just yeah. think that it, it was just important just to touch on that. Um, all of you guys who are tuning in to us live, please share it to y'all's pages so that y'all friends can actually get an opportunity to watch it live if they so please. And if they can't watch it live, they can watch it at their own convenience uh, a little bit later. Uh, but, but again, we always upload it to... Uh, YouTube shortly after uh, the broadcast ends and it always be on our page my my actual page and then I, I always uh, share it to the real talk page and of course these brothers share it to their own pages as well so um, y'all know uh, when we got the real talk signs just for the people that might be new viewers when y'all see us hold up these real talk signs that's just not all that is is just indicative of us saying, go ahead, brother. We're saying, hey, man, <laughs> keep going, dig in a little deeper, or we feel that you ain't digging in deep enough. We want you to go ahead. We're trying to encourage you <laughs> to go ahead and get in that thing. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, man, uh, without further ado, uh, before we start, we always like to start off with a word of prayer. And uh, I'll have uh, Minister Therese Jordan lead us in a word of prayer before we start our lesson. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We just thank you for everything you're doing and I'm done mm -hmm. in our life. Father, I just ask that you let your Holy Spirit sit with us, yes. dwell with us, speak to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, I'm back here, y'all. Y'all bear with me because I'm trying to work too. I'm working through camera, doing what I can, and I think we're gonna be all right. I just it's really like a test run on this other one. I want to see how it how it works out and uh is it doable in the future. Um 
right, all right. Without further ado, we get ready to start. Y'all ready, man? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm, 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 I'll kick it off. Uh, stop, drop, and worship. Stop, drop, and worship. Uh, it says that. Do we actually do we actually know when we are drifting towards anxiety or depression? Mm. Is there a specific knocking at the door of our heart, so to speak, that is obvious? Do we invite these feelings or are we simply a victim of them? Mm. Do they intrude like a sneaking, crouching lion? Such deep truths to ponder. Proverbs 4 and 6 tells us to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Then to add the cherry on top, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Could we actually live and walk in a peace which surpasses all understanding? If so, I want to live that way. So what is the disconnect? Why is our world dominated with anxiety and depression? Do we have any choice in the matter? Who is in charge of me? Scripture says in John 10 and 10 that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, mm. but that we have an option for abundant living as well. Mm. What upsets me even more than an enemy seeking to rob, kill, and destroy is that I often participate with him. Mm. Wow. Mm. I actually buy into his lies about my identity and allow him to disempower my life and my heart. But what about abundant living? Is there still a choice here? Yes. Once again, who is in charge of me? Blaming has never worked and will never work. Change can only begin when and if we take personal responsibility for where we are today. It's another word for saying taking accountability. Mm -hmm. I am aware that many of our lives have been riddled with uninvited trauma and circumstances. But we must tether our peace of mind to the faithfulness and the character of God and not to people, events, and circumstances. His promises are, are our only solid ground for tomorrow's hope as we believe that he actually can work all things together for the good of those that love him and are called into his plans. Now, um, if I stop right there, what it's really saying is it's not to let the, the, the things that are going on in the world around us, uh, events that happen, such as this war in Ukraine, um, although they may concern us, again, if you remember what we said, the difference between concern and worry, is that concern is just the first stage of worry, but it's that's normal to be concerned. You can be concerned again about your kids that are away in college for the first time, but that don't mean you worry. Worry creates a depression. Go ahead, jump in there, man. I want to say something about concern and worry. The, the Holy Spirit that brought to me. When you concern, you have control of the situation. But when you worry, the good. situation has control. That's you. good. That's a good way to put that, man. Good way to put that. Good way to put that. I thought that was great. Uh, oh, yeah. So what it's pretty much saying, the only thing that we have, though, mm -hmm. is the faith and hope in that God is who he says he is, right. that he'll do what he said he would do, and that's his promise. So for Christians and believers, that's, that's what we have to hold on to. Mm -hmm. Because like Brother Thomas said earlier, if we did not have that and we just only was here to live and die and go to hell, uh, life wouldn't be worth living, right. you know. But but because of that, we have a we have a reason um, to actually, I know a lot of people don't think of it this way, but we have a reason to look forward to this death. It's tough to say, but really, truly, if you are a believer and you believe in the promises of God, then you know things get much better after this world. Mm -hmm. They get so much better after this world. So even though you want to be around your family and friends, as long as God allows you to, truthfully, if you're a believer, this is nothing. It pales in comparison to, to what, what, what the promise is that God has made for, for his people. Go ahead, brother. And, and you got to actually believe that. To, you know, you have to believe that, you know, Jesus is real. You have to believe that there's an afterlife for us to dwell with him. You have to believe that. And you have to build your faith and your confidence in that so that you can attempt to make that change and to lean on that. So you have to ask God to help your unbelief. That's real. Good. Good stuff, man. Good. Good stuff. I'm going to go forward and read. Uh, um, finish up on my part. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we have. Um, yeah, when we feel our hearts drifting or thrown straight into anxiety, we could learn the power of stop, drop, and worship. That's that makes you immediately think about when they said you were if it was a fire, <laughs> if you were in the fire, uh, or for some reason you got fire on your clothes. They always told us in school to stop, drop, and roll. Mm -hmm. So when you saw that heading, that caption, on, and the subject of this lesson, it made you think about that is important. And matter of fact, it's actually in red. You know what I'm saying? So it actually gets your attention from the very beginning. It says that I have tested this idea. It's it is a game changer. During the times when news or information since my heart skyrocketing, I am keenly aware of anxiety knocking at my door. Mm. At these times, I purposely, I purposefully remember being be anxious for nothing. Mm. It seems a paradox to simultaneously have extreme anxiety while recording the scripture to be anxious for nothing. It's a situation devoid of peace and abundance. In my childlike attempt for obedience to Proverbs 4, 6 through 7, I start to pray and be grateful. Mm. This is totally an act of my will as my feelings are not in line. That means he, he don't really feel that, but this is not about emotions. And this is not a feeling thing, but he, he's relying on the promise that God has made. Right, right. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it, yeah, it's yeah. strictly obedience. Yeah, correct. Strictly obedience. That's real. That's, that's it. That's real. That's right. It says, yet, as I have stopped to drop in worship, I am actively, by my will, choosing to put my sovereign God back up on the throne of my heart and not the issue that is drawing me to anxiety. I am choosing obedience. I am not participating with the schemes of the sneaky enemy to rob, kill, and destroy my joy in the moment or the day or the season of life. I am not saying that this is easy. But when I choose obedience, I find that I step out of my emotional self and I step into his truth and greater purposes for the moment. I want to participate with the Lord and not with the enemy. I invite you to consider the same. Right. So basically what I'll get out of that is never, never in as tough as it may be. That's why you want to be actively and constantly reading the word, because that's what we're supposed to go to. And cling to whenever we're struggling with situations that may lead to anxiety and depression. And they are real in this world. And in, in, in 2022, it's talked about a whole lot more than it used to be talked about. It was one of those things back in the days when a person would probably tell you they suck it up. You know, everything going to be all right. But now it's, it's serious. It's people really deal with deep, deep depression. But like, again, that is the tax of the enemy. And to me, what I get from it is. That is distractions from for the from the enemy to get your mind off of the promises of what God has said. Because if you believe in what God has said, then you understand that these his his word is not designed to bring you into a place of darkness. See, depression normally, if I'm just being real, it normally seeks to put you in places that are in solitude, usually away from other people. Whether you're in a car alone or at a park by yourself or in a dark room, secluded from people, that's one of the main attacks of the enemy. He does not want believers around you. He does not want people who is going to, to encourage you and pray for you and move you away from that place. He wants you alone so that you can let your mind become That's right. idle. And once you let your mind become idle, when you're not filling it up with the word and the promises of God, then before you know it, the, the initial concern has become a deep worry. And from that deep worry, it has become anxiety. And from anxiety, it has led to depression, which is a real sickness. And uh, that, that's kind of what I get from that. I'll get these guys to floor for a minute. What, 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 what I got out of that, man, the, the, this part of the lesson, man, stop, stop, drop, and worship, is that you have a choice in the matter. A lot of people feel like that they don't have a choice. A lot of people feel like they just don't have uh, the the will or uh, or uh, uh, the know how to do what they're supposed to do in life. Um, but you have a choice in the matter. You have a choice if you want to be in anxiety. You have a choice if you want to be in depression. Don't let nobody take your choice away from you, because the thing about it is. You have a choice. Uh, and another thing that I got out of the 
lesson when it says that the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy, but God wants us to have an abundant life. But I'm here to tell you today that if the thief ain't coming knocking at your door, that means that you don't have value inside of you because the, the thief don't come to don't don't come to an empty house. It comes to a house that has value in it. Yeah. So the thing about it is when you have value in your life, he's gonna come. Right. He's gonna come suddenly to do just what he said he's gonna do to kill, steal, and destroy. But then it's, even then we have a choice in the matter. We have a choice to choose abundant life. That's right. That's right. When we come to a realization that um that we, we fight spirits, mm -hmm. uh, when we come to that to that knowledge of how and knowing how to fight, then we can pretty much walk in and 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 overcome and triumph in a lot of our situations in life. When we when we when we realize that this circumstance that I'm in is only a test. Or it's a, a trial or some tribulation that I'm going through. And if I can just rely on the word of God and get through this without, you know, um, doing the, the, the opposite of what I should do, then I will be rewarded. Either where it's knowledge, it's wisdom, or, or, or you can just have that, you obtain that to help somebody else through their dark, dark time. But, but, but we have to understand that it's nothing that we can do, but we have to go through Jesus. We really have to, you know, get a prayer life up. So that we can get our communication line functioning. Because through all this that we face, we have to have a spiritual connection with God just so we can get some juice from him. That's just to get some juice. But, but also it's the main line, you know, we can we can also get that, that wisdom from him. And we have to use that. You know, we can't um, let a circumstance, a situation come against us and we use our own knowledge and wisdom to get through it. Because our ways are not like the Lord. So right. once we really tap into the spirit and, and we get direction from him, and, and, and it just just like we get direction from him, we can we, we also we also get um a, he, he painted, I ain't gonna say he painted a picture, but he give us a vision through our obstacle. Yes. Okay? Uh -huh. And you have to see it. And then when you see it, you reach for it and he pulls you out of your situation. Right. So you have to develop that connection. And that line has to be tapped into the Holy Ghost so that you can get those downloads, so that he can, so that he can talk with you, so that he can, he can give you, you know, uh, uh, um, the little, little messages. Like for instance, um, God deal with me a lot of times. Sometimes he deal with me in dreams. Sometimes he deal with me as I read a word. Sometimes he deal with me through a, a fellow brother. And, and I know it's the Lord because it'll connect to the peace that I have already. Right. So you have to have a relationship with Jesus for real so that you can avoid those traps, those dark halls, those dark halls, those dark holes, those dark spaces, you know, that dark road. You can avoid that and, and it just just say you walked in anyway. God has 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 so much glory for you that if even if you walked in a dark time, his word would be a light to yes. your path. Yes. Right. Again, you gotta remember it's a living word. That's so right. that's one thing about it. It's not just words on paper. It's, it's a right. living word. And it's the same right. word that you use as weapons. It's the same word that you use to get yourself out of that's situation. Right. It's the yep. same word that you use to fight off the enemy yep. at all times. Because uh, if you think about it, you know, if you th think about uh, the most cliches like stop, drop, and roll, uh, these cliches are words that, I mean, are, are cliches that we use as children to help make sure that we get our attention. Because uh, every kid can always remember short and simple little cliche, stop, drop, and roll. And what the reason why they made that so simple, because in a time of which would normally be anxiety, which is you on fire, mm -hmm. they don't want you to be thinking they want it to be second nature. Mm -hmm. You understand? So if it's second nature, that means it's been built into you. So instead of you trying to figure out what to do while you're on fire, they taught us to stop, drop, and roll. If you think about the lesson, and when you first open up the lesson, for those who may be watch, reading a lesson along with us, it starts off with stop, drop, and worship, and it's in a octagon like a stop sign. Mm -hmm. And it's got red background. And if you think about that red background, it looks just like a stop sign. So when you go to a stop sign, everybody knows that they're supposed to stop, right? Mm -hmm. So if you stop, 
it, that already got my attention. And then the, the red color, it, it's also on purpose to get your attention. But really, the cliche, they know that it will remind us of stop, drop, and roll. And so they're saying, don't get all, don't make it so complicated. Don't make it so complex. When you feel the enemy trying to attack you in these certain areas, before you think, don't think about it. Stop, drop, and worship. I'm trying to get to the nitty gritty of They're trying to remind you of the the same childlike belief that we had in mm -hmm. stop, drop, and roll. They're trying to get your mind to stop thinking about it oh, yeah. and let it become a part of That's your right. nature. So if you, every every time something is attacking you, most times we, most of the time we try to deal with it on our own. We might ask somebody else about it and that's fine. But the first thing we should have done is praise and worship him in the midst of the storm. That's right. Because when you do that, you are telling him that I have all belief and, and faith in what your word says. And no matter That's that I'm right. going through this storm at this particular time, I know that it, it shall pass. That's right. And so when, as soon as it start happening, and you'll, you'll be amazed at how God will start moving that away from you. As soon right. as you give him praise and worship, it's not the easiest thing. This is, takes practice and it takes time. Oh, yeah. But hey, what man. I'm trying to focus in on is they're trying to make this become a part of your innate culture. That's right. Yeah. No one has to remind you about, because if I just said stop, drop, everybody would have said the last one. Oh, yeah. Stop, drop. I'm waiting though. Stop, drop, and, and that everybody knows that. Yeah. So what they're trying to do is say stop, drop, and Worse. and we're simple as that. <laughs> if you say that a couple of times, what they say, how long it takes to make it happen? Mm -hmm. Twenty one times. Say it twenty one yeah. times. Try that today. <laughs> Just say it twenty one times. Try that today, and it'll be become. Yeah. As soon as you start feeling yeah. that, yeah. it start yeah. makes you anxious, feel, make Worse. you feel outside of your your body. You don't feel like you have control of your emotions. You starting to feel that you're panicking all the time. You're feeling like you don't have control over the situation, and you don't know where to turn. That is because that is the onset of anxiety. But it may just be at the very beginning stage of concern, but it's not gotten past concern if you don't deal with it right away. Right, right. If you don't deal with it right away, it becomes worry, and worry becomes anxiety, and anxiety becomes full-blown depression. Okay. So that's that's what I got from day one, man. Uh, Brother Charles, if you have anything you want to share? Yeah, I think um, from day one, what I was led to was, you know, the discipleship and growing in Christ. Um, and specifically Peter, when um, they seen Jesus and how Peter was afraid. And uh, Jesus told him to, to do not do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. And we see when we're in this little, um, we're in a little of a storm in this journey called life, it's easy to become focused on the storm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus, everything was was begin to feel peace. We begin to feel fulfillment, satisfaction. Because we even see the moment that Peter focused on the storm, he sank. He yeah, said, that's oh, right. Yep. That's right. As soon as he focused on the storm. He sank. That's right. And that's how the enemy works. As soon as we focus on our problem, how we're short hundred dollars on this bill, right? How we don't have no gas in our tank. The moment we focus on the yeah. negatives, that's when the enemy begins that's to drive us deep That's real talk. Yeah. Right. That's, that's real talk. That's real talk. That's good. Death for real. Yeah. 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 That's good brother. Death for real. <laughs> and obedience is just obeying God's word. You know, as He tells us, you know, He tells us to not be afraid three hundred sixty-five times in the Bible. And it's 365 days in a year. So it's every single day you should not that's good, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Brother Tommy, man, man. Good, he be hitting man. us with him, man. He hit us yeah. with him, man. Quiet assassin. Quiet assassin, man. man. Awesome, man. That's great, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna forget that either. I'm always remember that's, that how you yeah. put that. Like yeah. yeah, that's many. Yeah. That's always five days. Yeah, man. I'm gonna keep that in my That's good. I look up, it's true. That's what's up, man. That's, wow. That's good, man. So now, man, I, I'll read a few of the uh, verses, the scriptures that go along and with this particular lesson. John 14 and 27, I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Again, if you follow along, it's in red. If y'all know what that means Dude. in the Bible, that means that is directly coming from Jesus, yeah. God slash mouth. It's coming from directly from his mouth. Um, when it's in black and white, that is someone speaking on behalf of him or uh, through him because he came. Jesus gave it through them and they're speaking it. But when he's in red, that is from his mouth. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Yes, that's right. Then I'll read John 10 and 10. This is it's, it's small, but we talked about it. Everybody knows it. It says the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. You know, he don't want to do one of the three. 
He yeah, wants all, all of them. So, man. so again, if you correlate that to the concern and the worry, you don't want to go to all three of them. Right. You stay in concern if you want to, and then let's move on. <laughs> go ahead and stop dropping right. worship because yeah. concern, worry, anxiety, and you know the next one is depression. Yeah. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full, or you may have other versions that say more abundantly. First of all, for those who think that we have a God that is a a, a, a God of of humble uh, beginnings, a God that is uh, shorthanded, a God that does not have more than enough, then you serve in the wrong one. I'm telling you, that's not the God we serve. The God we have serve has all. He he created all and he has all. And he, and he also has all that he would like to share with you. Uh, a lot of times we are in our own way from those things. A lot of times we are so much in our way that God has said that you, you have to be ready to receive what I have for you. And right yeah. now I'm developing you right. to get to a point where you can receive that. Right. So sometimes you don't have what you prayed for because you're not ready. Uh, so sometimes you, like, you're just not ready. He, God is always ready. Sometimes we're not ready. And one thing that we read before in one of our previous lessons that God will never give you something. That's that he right. know you're not ready for. Right. So I'm just keeping it real. Sometimes you can pray and pray and pray and pray. Mm -hmm. But while you're praying, you probably need to be also developing what it is that That's you're praying right. for. Yeah. Because right. he's not going to give you something that you can't handle. If you only can handle one school... And, and that's all you do, and or one exactly. classroom, that's all you're going to be <laughs> until you show him that you can multitask. When you show him that, then you may become the principal yeah, now. Right. I'm just giving you an example of how it works sometimes. That's sometimes really it's not that he did not hear. It's not that he didn't even send out angels to go ahead and dispatch that for you. But it's going to be when you're ready. Out of mm -hmm. all the things that God can do, one thing he will never do is take open and knock open your door. He'll never kick down your door. Mm -hmm. he, can, he has power to knock down and kick down any other walls in the world. But one wall he chose not to because he gave us free will is to not kick down our wall. Right. And that's something we have to invite him in. That's and that's right. amazing that, you know, he can do it when he wants to. That's like a thief being outside knowing he can know the cold to your, to your door. But he just chose, you know what, I ain't going to do it until they let me in. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not going to do it. But I know how to get in at all times. I don't think most, pe most people can have that kind of access to your to your privacy and not yeah, take advantage right. of that. That's but God right. says that I'm not going to do that. I'm going to allow, you have to allow me in. And, I, and why I'm saying that is because you have to allow him in. And then also you have to allow him in so that he's able to bless you in a way that you think that you so deserve. Some things God knows that it will be detrimental to you. Right. You praying for it. But God says that if I give this to them at this particular time, I am going to lose them. Some, some of us That's really, right. truly are not spiritually ready for some of the things that we're asking for. And yeah, so until we develop, it's important. we have to develop. You couldn't go to kindergarten and go straight to 12th grade. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. No one did that. <laughs> you have to develop. Real talk. And that's just as simple as that, man. So real we're going to move on, man. We're going to move on to day two. Uh, let me let me get, get caught up. Uh, the other scriptures you can read along at your own time. For the sake of time, we're going to move forward to day two. We're going to have Minister Therese Jordan read day two. Day two, mindless living. Are you mindlessly walking through life? Mm. Most of us live our lives simply doing the next thing. We are not really thinking about the next thing. We are just doing it. I doubt if many young children live with an ounce of intentionality, going through their day and their play. Habits mindlessly start in our youth without a real thought of the future consequences of such. Often we end up wasting our precious time as habits creep into our lives unannounced. Habits like watching TV, eating junk food, drinking, coats, roaming on, the, roaming on the computer, developing poor posture or health choices, and spending money on things that we really don't need. We are not intending to waste our days, but nothing seems pressing when we are children or young adults mindlessly developing these poor habits. Since our enemy is set upon destroying our <coughs> relationship, mindless living is his dream spot for mm. us. Wow. He would love to rob, steal, and destroy all things pertaining to abundant living or the fulfillment of such. Mindless living is his subtle uh, master plan for humankind. The enemy of our souls does not want us to know that we were created on purpose, with purpose, and for a purpose. Wow. That's right. Wow. Nor does he want us to know that we are each uniquely gifted to serve and bless others. 
He wants us to be arrogant and self-indulgent about our gifts because our enemy knows that pride does comes before a fall. Yes, yes. Yes. Our greatest satisfaction is sweet spot of fulfillment comes when we actually serve and live in all the beautiful and good works that God assigned us for ahead of time. The same God that made the mountains, the galaxies, and the ocean choose to make you. Wow. We are each created fearfully and wonderfully. That's right. We are each called beloved. We are each called his masterpiece, sit in the sun for such a time as this. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I invite you to tune into wisdom and intentional living as you seek to understand that your days are numbered and he has a magnificent plan for you. Mm -hmm. A plan filled with more than you could hope for or imagine. There is nothing mindless about that. That's that really is amazing. Right. That mm -hmm. is amazing. Once we, we this is this is what I received from it. Getting out of mind to the way of the Lord so that he can create in us a clean heart and a new spirit. See, when God give us um, that um, spiritual enhancement, he also imparts that wisdom and knowledge. But we have to use that wisdom and knowledge. See, spiritual maturity comes as you develop a tighter relationship with God, a closer bond with God, because your, 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 your spiritual man will be so dominant to where when you face with situations, the first thing you're going to do is stop, drop, and roll. Right. When you want to get a car, you're going to stop, drop, and worship. Excuse right, me. Right, the right. first thing you're going to do is stop and talk with God and pray to God. Uh, me and my wife ran into a, a financial, uh, I would say, uh, maybe I can say it's safe to say an increase. So the first thing we did was pray. First thing we did was pray over the money. We prayed over our minds. We prayed over our hearts so that everything, every move we make will be intentional. Mm. And it will be pertaining to our purpose and what God has for us. That's right. Now, you can shortcut yourself by doing things because your flesh wants it. See, a lot of time it takes patience, and you receive that through the Spirit of God. So if you operate in the Spirit of God, you'll be able to operate in patience. You'll be able to operate in gentleness, kindness, long-suffering, forbearance. You'll be able to operate in all those um, traits that builds up into God so that you can receive your full blessing. But what happens is this. We get derailed when we want what we want yeah. and don't stop dropping worship. Right. When we go, go, go. Right. Okay. Good. Good. So what we have to do, we have to slow down and allow the spirit of God to direct our steps to all our steps. And if you're going to let someone train you or someone uh, teach you something, you have to lower your mind. You have to lower your pride. You have to lower your arrogance. You have to lower your capabilities of knowing what you know. You have to stop and allow that person to train you. If you are uh, arguing and welder, you go to a shop somewhere and, and, and they're going to uh, still train you if you uh, um, 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 some type of um, engineer and you can uh, work for this great plant, they're going to retrain you. It don't matter what you know. So you have to be trained for that specific, for that way, for that manufacturing company. So with that being said, you have to be born again so that God can really direct your ways. Just because you know 2 plus 2 is 4, the way you do it don't mean that's the way you add it up. Maybe you have to add it up a different way to get a different result. You see what I'm saying? So what we have to do, we have to break <coughs> down our way of living into little bitty pieces and let God, let the Holy Ghost come in and flow to us and rebuild us into that masterpiece that he said we is. Yes. So that's how we have to do. We have to really just stop, drop, and worship. Stop, drop, and worship. Worship everything. Come and say with God. Praying to God. Letting him do whatever he has to do to get you to what you got to get to. Yes. For real. Uh I reminded of a song that uh, Otis Redding made. He said, I was just sitting at the dock of the bay, watching the time just roll away. Sitting at the dock of the bay, just wait, wasting time. God is a God that don't want us to just sit back wasting time because our time is precious to him. Right? That's right. The thing about it is, is that God wants us to live intentional. That's right. That's he wants real. us to live on purpose. That's real. He wants us to live like we have something to live for. If you are living this mindless living, 
It's living like you don't have purpose. Right. It's living like you don't have something to live for. And God is letting us know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made with his masterpiece. We are raw priesthood. I was telling uh, Minister Therese in the store yesterday, if we uh, say that we are of mm -hmm. God, we're supposed to look like we from That's God. That's right. If we say that that, that, that we are... Uh, that we have God in our life, we're supposed to look like it. That's we are right. king's kids. That's right. right. So the thing about it is, God don't want us sitting here wasting time, like that song says. He want us to be here living on purpose, right. with purpose in mind. That's good. Man, let me let me let me see. Uh, because that was great, and you was hitting on a lot of points that I was going to make. But I wanna, I'm gonna let the Holy Spirit use me right quick, and cause some, some was coming over me when I was listening to that. Some, some ways to break this little plan down a little bit. So first of all, we're talking about mindless living. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's just like you said. That's living with just getting up, floating yeah. with the wind. You know, yeah. wherever the wind takes me. That's right. But I want you to understand that God don't make no mistakes on nothing that He created. And uh, even though they mentioned the mountains and the galaxies and the ocean. When God made all these things, he just characterized them as being good. Yeah. But to let you know how much he thought of us as a masterpiece, he said that man do. He thought of us as very good. That's right. So if you if he if he specifically chose to use that verbiage, when he could have just stuck with good, it was intentional. Mm -hmm. You see how intentional he was That's by right. letting you know who you are? That's he right. was trying to let readers in the future mm -hmm. know who they are That's right. in him. Because he said, I'm going to separate good from my from mine, which they are very good. Because he could have kept the same word. Yeah. He chose that on purpose. So again, so if he said that, then he's saying that everything that you was created for, it was been thought out That's long right. before you. Right. That means you're not here by accident. Listen, I'm going to give you yeah. something else. If you're here right now in 22, and you feel like, man, I wish I would have been born in another time frame because we're going through all this stuff. No, God made it specifically for you to yeah, be right. here right now. Yeah, right. Because there's something Amen. about you right now that only you have that can change the life of someone else. That's right. That's right. It's, it's, it's only for you right now in 22. In this generation that we live in, in this time frame. You weren't supposed to have been born in 1920. You're supposed to have been born just when you were born. That's right. And the ones who were born, when they were born, they, they had a mission too. That's right. Some of them if you didn't think spiritually, you would say, well, they had a mission. The people that was in the 1920s and 30s were born and they helped move us from one, 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 one place in history to another place through civil rights. And that's just the, that's just the natural thing. Right. But it's a spiritual thing that God has for us that's to be right. created at a certain time that only you can do. The things that Martin wow. Luther King was able to do during yeah. his short 39 years on this earth, it was for him only that's right. to do it the way he did it. That don't mean he was perfect. It means that his cause was just and his days were numbered and every day mattered. Mm -hmm. And he had, didn't have time to waste. If you follow his history, he always had something planned for oh, the yeah. next day. What yeah, I'm yeah. telling you is mindless living is almost like saying idle too. Right. Huh? It's if it's it. idle, yeah. that's the you same thing that the devil that wants. Like he it. wants that, right? The that's devil good. wants your mind idle, not that's thinking. Good. It says that's in the plan wow. to not be thinking. He wants you to just be getting up, going with the flow. See, yeah. you are specially and uniquely made that you have a specific reason for being here. Yes, the right. key to it is finding out what your divine purpose is, not your right. natural purpose. Yeah, Sometimes right. the natural purpose and the divine purpose do align. That's right. But always remember, when you're worrying about if it's divine or you're concerned whether or not it's a, from God, if it does not benefit the improvement of others around, or others in the world, or if it's not going to change the societal norm, if it's not going to change the way people see and view each other, then nine times out of ten, that is an ambition. That's an ambitious uh, uh, desire. It's not an mm -hmm. it's divine desire. Yeah, it's right. just, I'm just keeping it real. Right. When you're trying to find your purpose, always ask yourself, that's simple, categorize it, say, is it benefiting others? Is it leading others to the kingdom? That's if right. it's not, and it's self-centered. It's just an ambition. That's, That's not right. wrong to have ambition. That's right. But ambition is more selfish That's right. in nature. I'm That's keeping. Right. I'm just being honest with you about that. So remember, the key things that I want to say about this lesson is that you, 
go when we deal with these things like anxiety and depression and all that. Oh, and you start feeling like you nobody. You know, the Wiggins brother used to have saying, I'm just a nobody, trying to tell everybody about. But look, when you start feeling like you a nobody, remind yourself of some of these scriptures with how God used certain right. verbiage to describe you. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. You are a masterpiece, uniquely and wonderfully made. He says that you are sent and assigned for such a time as this. Yeah. You are supposed to be here yes. right now. What Man. whatever it is that you're supposed to be That's doing, good. no one knows that but you and God. But you have to have a relationship with God so that he, he can reveal it That's to you. It. Like you said, Brother brother That's Jordan, you said That's that sometimes he comes to you in dreams. Yeah. He comes to some others in visions. Yeah. Sometimes others, it comes through another person prophesying something and making yeah. it clearer mm -hmm. for another. But what I'm telling you, you have to figure that out. That's right. Because your whole life is meaningless That's right. without it. That's right. Your whole life is mindless without it. You yes. don't have no reason to be here if you can't find out why God wanted you here. We yeah. talked about it several times before. Many people in this world leave this world without ever getting out that thing that Man. God put in them to get out. Right. The, the cemetery is the richest place in the world, not because it's got all kind of money and gold, but, but it's because it has the best ideas yeah. and inventions and songs and poems yeah. and writings and books yeah. and authors that never yeah. got a chance to share that with the world. They was designed to be here for whatever reason they got mindless living, yep. took over, they yep. forgot about the purpose that they were here for, and then they allowed themselves to die without ever fulfilling the right. thing that God purposed for them to fulfill on that's this right. earth. So that's just what I've got out of that, man. I'm going to share with y'all, man. I'm going to tell you something. Man, y'all crazy. Man, y'all crazy, man. That, that's what I got out of that, man. That's good, man. That's good. Nah, but I had a, uh, man, that was, that was great. Yeah. I had a, a couple points that I wanted to hit with this um, day. And it's like, basically, piggybacking off you, living with a purpose. You see, when I was going through depression, I didn't know my purpose. I just knew cry, complain, cry, complain some more, cry, sit in my room in the dark room, complain, cry. That's all I knew. Right. I didn't know why I was so always alone. I never had nobody. I, I understand that. Yeah. But see, as I got saved, I realized that my purpose is to bring people closer to Jesus because someone brought me closer to Jesus. Right. And I want the same for somebody else. And it's, easy, it's so easy to get comfortable once you get saved. Like, oh, I'm so saved. I made a TikTok video one time that you get saved, and it's like you sit on the sideline. Right, like, right. I figured out. I got saved, so I'm just yeah. going to go to heaven. Yeah. Like that. But see that there's danger in that, though. Yeah. Because you can be that one person for someone. You can be that, that one example of Christ, that one reflection of Christ. That's you right. just speak up. If you just be bold, don't That's be ashamed. Right. That's right. You know, it's easy to become prideful and, and fearful. And we just talk about it. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Trust. Trust the Holy Spirit to use you. You know, you, you have a purpose. We all have a purpose. We all have a unique purpose. We are all part of the body of Christ. You know, I don't care if you're the toenail. You are <laughs> right. Real talk? That's you right. have a purpose. I don't That's care right. if you're the toenail, the uh -huh. nose, I don't care. The eyes, you have a purpose. And I was brought to a parable with this um with this plan. It was in Matthew 25. How the first man received five talents, mm -hmm. the second man received two, and the third man received one. The first two, the first two men doubled the talents. The first man had five, he came back with five more. The second man had uh, two, came back with two more. The last man didn't do anything with the talent God gave him. Right. Mm -hmm. He he let he he buried, I think he buried it. He, yeah. he buried it. He just he hid it. Mm -hmm. And it goes to show that fear, when fear comes into play or the enemy comes into play, it's easy to become ashamed and like you you mm -hmm. sit in this corner. You know, and at first I was like that. You know, when I got saved, I didn't really know. You know, I was I was afraid to speak up and speak about Jesus. I was afraid of what people are thinking of me. I don't want to look like I'm, I'm judging, but yeah. that's not the case. You see, you're supposed to have truth, but with grace. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's real. That's real. Yeah. 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 That's real. Yeah. 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 You know, I needed somebody to tell me the truth. That, <laughs> yes, sir. You know, I needed somebody to tell me the truth that fornication will lead me to hell. That certain things will lead me to hell. I needed somebody to tell me the truth. But they showed me grace too, which led me to Jesus. Because it's easy, and I've seen a lot of people, and I, I talked to somebody, I don't want to say the person's name, but she, the person is confused right now. And she mentioned, she, she mentioned that I'm the only Christian that is making her like shift. Because all other Christians are so, it's like, oh, you go to hell, you, you know, you don't believe yeah, this and that. Yeah. Like, they don't have no type of grace and love behind it. Mm -hmm. wow. You have to have grace and love behind it because that's the easiest way to be, become like Christ and to lead Jesus, to lead people to Jesus. That's right. And to end it off, I was basically, um, 
I'm gonna say like my big question to y'all, you know, even myself, you know, what are you doing with your talent that God gave you? You know, what are you doing? Are you using wow. it? Are you utilizing it? Or are you sitting back and just letting everything go out the way it is? Right. Yeah. Are you being useful or useless? Oh man, that's true, cool, man. I, the last <laughs> time I said, oh, that's, that's true, man, that's true. Uh and I think I seen on this app and it was like live every day like it should last because one oh, day yeah. it'll be right. That's right. One yeah. day it will be that's right. It's true. What, what will you be able to tell Jesus? When you when you go up there and you have judgment day, what would you better yeah. say that you did with your talent? That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. what's up, man. Yeah. That's good. That's good, yeah. man. That's good. It's all good. That's good, man. It, always remember, man. Uh, many times, God God has given up every one of us gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, all of us have them. Uh, and the thing about it is, sometimes, uh, you know, many times if we do what's right with them, they will make room for us in our other sides of parts of our life. That's right. But remember why the gift is in you. You know, I've talked. I talked about this one time. They always say if you want to hide something from somebody, put it in the Bible because they won't read it. Well, also if you want to hide something from someone, make them dig deep inside because they don't realize that it's inside their body, it's inside their mind and their heart and soul. Everything that you need to get to where you want to be, you ain't got to go find it nowhere. You just got to learn you. You be like, what you mean? I'm forty something years old. I know me. No, you don't know you. You don't know you. Because if you don't know what your gifts and talents are, you don't know you yet. Right. And that ain't negative. That just means you got to dig a little deeper and right. spend a little time alone with yeah, yourself. Right. Yeah, you know, you'd be like, how can I spend more time alone? I'm with myself. No, sometimes you just don't give yourself quiet time right. to actually ask God, what is it that you put in me yes, that God. only I have? Because God yeah. gave you something. And it's a gift that you have. It's a, it might be still on your job to be a foreman, but you're the only one on that foreman on that job site that got some light about it. You know, you got regular dudes yeah. that's coming on there doing a normal rip, rigmarole, but they start seeing every time when 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 Foreman Therese is is on, is coming to work, something that's feel different. You know, yeah. he he going about his regular day, still got to earn a living, still got to. Yeah. But even though he's earned a living, everybody's gift not going to be the same and be a superstar singer, or or some people can sing well and they still not going to be gifted to blow up and be a superstar. Right, right. What I'm telling you is your most fulfillment is going to come from when you know you're doing what God told you to do That's with right. it. That's See, when you right. do what God told you to do with it, you have a boundless, uh, boundless places for it to go. That's you right. you will never, ever, ever be able to write a book to tell you yeah. about the thing that God has done with your life yeah. until you let him have it. That's when right. you let him have it, you would have never written that. Some of the stuff that you've done and experienced since that, since you since you accepted him and told him to take over and take the, take the will... You think about some of the things that has happened in your life. You oh, know, yeah. it's nowhere in the world you would have written that story. Oh yeah. So it's it's the 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 the, the opportunities that exist when you listen to God and you learn about your purpose and you find that thing that's inside of you. Because like they say, it's not buried under no rock. You ain't got to be looking in no backyard hoping somebody <laughs> hit rob the bank one day and, and put it in your backyard. Man, whatever you need, that's right. it's already inside of you. Oh, that right. that is the you you might that's a tough thing because some people live their whole life and don't never find it. That's right. But it's really because they was mindlessly living. Oh, yeah. They they were mindlessly living. They just got up every day with no purpose. If you ask your kids, so I'm just this is man, something to ask. Good, I, I don't do it. That's good. Sometimes I do it and I'm intentional. Yeah. We, we've talked about intentional yeah. parenting and all yeah. that. Uh -huh. But I think a good thing to do is to be able to say, you know what, I, I'm gonna ask my son, what what's on your agenda tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Like what, what no, just see what he really say. Don't give him nothing to, to go off of. Just hear his real answer and then start coaching him over time and see if that answer starts changing. Because uh -huh. the first time, he's going to probably say, oh, I don't know, I'm just chill. That's normal. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but if you start making it intentional, he realizes that every day is supposed to be a plan. Right. I am supposed to do something today. It ain't supposed to be mindless. Probably a couple of months down the road, your son going to say, well, Dad, when I get up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. You know, I'm going to read my scripture. And you know I'm gonna do blah blah, and I'm gonna play my game a little bit. But but now he's start you starting to direct his mind right, 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 to yeah. not just mindlessly living, right. because a lot of times we let our kids play the game to keep us from being parents. Yeah, that sounds no, rough. Facts, we don't yeah. be saying it like that out loud. That ain't what we saying intentionally. But, but what I'm happens, saying is though. it's a pacifier. It, it, they just don't put it in their mouth no more. Right. It's a it's a pacifier. So long as he playing, I ain't gotta talk. As long as they plan, I ain't got to teach. As right. long as they plan, I don't have to train. As long as they plan, I can do what I want to do. But you know, when you have a kid, not only are they gifts, they are work. Uh -huh. And you are responsible for the outcome uh -huh. to, to a certain degree. You're responsible for, in, for instilling uh -huh. something into them. Now, because you're going to be judged on that, on your own. So always remember that. So we got to, 
not only teach ourselves to stop mindlessly mm-hmm. living, but we have to teach our children to stop mindlessly living. And I ain't gonna lie, that's a challenge. Cause some days we do be busy, but but it's just a it's something that we just gotta start taking one day at a time uh-huh. and just try. I'm done, man. That's good. That's I'm good, done. man. The scripture, uh, I read one of them. It's a, it's a good one. Um, Ephesians two and ten. It says, "For we are His workmanship, created in Christ." Jesus unto good works, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. good works, okay, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen. Good, good. Man, that's good stuff, man. We're going to move on. We're going to, I'll read a few comments. We've been getting a few comments saying we said, Ms. Bella Jackson said, hello, everyone. Ms. Leona Green said, you are so right. The word says through love and kindness have I drawn thee. And then Ms. Trina Dice said, Amen. Amen. Oh, man, I'm glad. We really appreciate you guys tuning in live and getting a chance to, to fellowship with us. That's all it is. It's a fellowship. It's a, it's, a, it's a 2020 version of Bible study, and we just do it, and we bring it to y'all social media oh, live. Yeah. So for this little hour that we have, hour 15, hour 20 minutes, we want to make sure that we flood our timeline with some positive news. Oh, yeah, uh, and right. it's going to be always supported by the scripture. That's yeah. just all we're doing. Yes, real right. people in real life with real issues. Because if you've been watching the show long enough, you realize that we have all gone through travails. Oh, yeah. right. We've <laughs> all gone through some tough times. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we're in the middle of one now, <laughs> and they get from one, and then, some, and then we come out on the other end. We, we done come out on the other end. So I'm telling you, this ain't no fake show. It's real. It's real talk. It's real talk. We're going to move on to day three. We're going to have Pastor Water Dyson read day three. All right. Uh, Knock and shout. Amen. Knock and shout. How is it that we can all be so surprised by that which is predictable? Life can be difficult, but whoever said that it wouldn't be so. The naivety of young adult living leads to a rude awakening when growing up and adulting. Even the physical the physical life of in in tropophy says that Everything is decaying and becoming disordered. If there isn't some force <coughs> offset, offsetting this, things are likely to decline when left under t- un- under manners are not propped up by some intention in- in- intentions. Otherwise, life takes work. Yes, it does. Of, of course, marriages are hard when they are composed of two human beings coming from two completely different lives and childhoods. Both of those individuals are distinctly different parents raising them and influencing their lives and decisions. And not to mention, each of these individuals have been raised in fallen in, in a fallen world filled with abounding sin. Yes, yes. Hmm. This would lend this would lend one to easily think that marriages might take some work, some hard work. Yes, they do. But creating a beautiful, a beautiful love affair in relationship is possible. And then there's parenting. Would we have ever thought that parenting would be easy? Two sinners making making love and birthing other sinners. <laughs> that's rough, right there, high sound, right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's rough. Yes, we have a marvelous hope of sanctified living, but we are also daily reckoning with the flesh condition that leads to leads to himself fosters a tendency towards sin. So, take the thought that these two people 
that merit are now birthing individuals with different God-given personalities, purposes, and strengths. Unbeknownst to the mother or father at birth, often I ended up parenting my round peg to live in my square hole. Mm. Because I have not yet discovered their true personalities and gifts, thank goodness for a redeemer that can redeem and restore all that the locusts have eaten through misguided and perfect parenting from perfectly imperfect people. Wow. That's tough. We often expect education to be hard or a certain job to be hard, we must come to grips that our lives will drift off course if we do not intentionally work on course correcting them. Work. Some people end up knocked up, knocked off track and shocked with the results of their lives. Let's open up our eyes today and roll up our sleeves and invest in the lives that we want to live. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Choose to live today and the rest of your days and, and very best of your life. Let, let's prioritize our choices. Let's ask for wisdom. Let's get to work. Yes, relationships take work. But are worth it. Amen. Amen. Uh, what I get from this, man, is that uh, me and my wife always talk. And uh, and when we talk about our marriage, we talk about uh, we are two different businesses merging together as one, as one business. Mm -hmm. So it means that we have different ethnicities. We have different backgrounds. We were taught differently. We were raised different, but we got to come together and merge together as one. Uh, yes, uh, marriages take hard work. Yes, any relationship <coughs> in your life take hard work. Any aspect of your life that requires work is hard. Right. But when you work hard at it, the results will be amazing. Right. The results will be beautiful. The results will be peace, love, joy, and happiness when you work at it. Anything in life that comes to you easy is not worth having. That's right. But anything that you have to work for in life is worth having. That's good. That's what I got out of that. That's good, man. What I got out of it is um, <clears throat> it's really, you got to give an effort. Yeah. Right. You got to give effort. Yes, sir. And everything is not going to always be comfortable to you, it's, especially when it's uh, pertaining to a change and in, in, in making preparations to, 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 to think better and to do better and to walk in greater. You know, so with that, you have to have some discipline within yourself. You, you really have to find it in your heart to to be humble, to, 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 to be able to allow God to really give you that direction. So that you won't be mindlessly living. So, 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 so it, it takes me back to you, you really have to stop dropping worship. And when you have kids you're raising, it's imperative that you really walk in your purpose. It's imperative right, right. that you that you fulfill that that God has placed in your life to obtain because you have to lead and direct your kids. Right. And you have to help and coach them to Jesus. And Jesus will show them their purpose. Right. It's not about what we want out of them too much. It's, it's, it's really what God placed in them. And it's our job to show them Jesus so that Jesus can turn that light on within them so that they can walk in their purpose. And we That's can right. support them and guide them and give them um, um, you know, knowledge and wisdom that was that, that we went through and obtained by experience in life. And we can save them some heartache and trouble. We can save them some pain. We can really work in that area and be effective there That's if right. we first come humble unto God and let him direct us and we can really put up a, a nice, uh, 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 I would say, we can prioritize our life 
and, and our values a little better than what we do. And, and allow the Holy Spirit to really conduct our ways and, and, oh, yeah. and give us impartations on how to do and what we need to do. It's going to go all the way back to us really coming down and developing a relationship with God so that he can give us what we need to give our kids, or our friends, right. our fellow brother, our sister, you know, uh, give them insight on how, 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 how we live with, 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 with the Lord, how we walk with him, how we, how we, how we really represent him as service and, and right. disciples. And that's how we really have, that's what I get out of that day. It, it's really, it's it going to take humbleness. It, it, it's going to take a lot of, okay, it's not my will, but your will, Lord. It's going to take a lot of that. It's going to take yeah, a lot of, it. yeah, it's selfless. It's a selfless walk that you have to walk. That's right. That's good, man. That's good. Uh, I want to, I'm going to share uh, my little take on it. Mom, not much, uh, but. I, I want to reiterate and say that first line, I think it says, and then there is parenting. Mm. No, my bad. That's not the first line, but I'm going to start right there. And then there is parenting. Would we have ever thought that parenting would be easy? Two sinners making love and birthing other sinners. Mm. Yes, we have the marvelous hope of sanctified living. But we are also daily reckoning with the flesh condition that left to itself fosters a tendency towards sin. All that's saying is that if you only... If you're only dealing with the flesh side of things and you're only feeding your flesh, mm. then it automatically has a tendency towards sin. It's a natural, uh, it's it's a natural order. That's right. Without imparting Jesus in it. That's right. right. And the Holy Spirit in the equation. Because you was already born to some other sinners. You don't want to think about your parents that way, but the world is sinners. That's right. But what you don't want to be, you don't want to stay in sin. That's right. Uh -huh. But if you're born to sinners and then you have a natural inkling toward doing the wrong thing if you check a little small baby that's nothing but months old and crawling as soon as they get ready to do something wrong they start looking back at you mm -hmm. I'm telling you because they already have something yeah. inside of them that lets yeah. them know that what I'm trying to do is probably wrong even though my <laughs> mind can't really understand yeah. everything my flesh wants that's to real. do the wrong thing so then it says if you bring these kind of people together in marriage two different backgrounds raised differently mm -hmm. two different parents on both sides, present or non-present or partially present, but different philosophies and moral beliefs and foundational cores. Do you come together and you're not equally yoked? That's all. That's a problem already if you're not equally yoked. See, you can have these different backgrounds, but it's one common denominator that allows y'all to overcome those different backgrounds. The common denominator is the word of God that's right. because the word of God never changes it is never wavers. It's always the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. God is the same all the time. So if you say, you know what? I know how I was raised. I know how you was raised. We are finding conflict all the time. But how about let's try something different. Let's see how God says we should do it. If you do it like that, then all the things that you felt you were short changed by in your upbringing, mm -hmm. the thing that you thought you were lacking because of whatever your parents just may not have known or they may not have been ready yeah. or living that life. Sometimes it's not their fault. They did the best they could right. and then they grew and got better later. But when you was coming up, maybe that wasn't the time but your little brother caught the saved mother, the one that know God. You didn't. You the oldest. I'm just giving you examples yeah. of how it goes. Yeah. No matter about all of that, you can only stay in your pity party so long. You can only keep saying how I was taught, how I was raised. It ain't right. my fault. You know, why was I like that? But what you do have an opportunity is because God always has a way to make sure you find out about who he is through someone. And when you do, if you take all your differences, bring them together, one common denominator will supersede those differences because you can't argue with the word if y'all believe us. Right. Equally right. yoked. If you, see, you can argue with me about my philosophy on how I do things, uh -huh. but if the word said and we have a good understanding of what the word says, that's then that's just what it is. That's Don't try to fix it to make it fit you. It's just what it is. That's so that's right. that's kind of what I got out of that. It says when you don't have no plans and you just kind of go with the wind, you can be knocked and shocked. And they say when people sometimes have gotten knocked off track, they end up being shocked with the results of their life. That's right. I know there are people who started their life off on one track. For some reason or another, life gave them some curveballs. You see them people now. We'll call them downtrodden. Whatever word you want to use for them. But, but you have to remember that they didn't always have this way of living. Right. Uh, but they got shocked. They got knocked and shocked. Yeah. 
and they didn't have nothing to get them back on course. That's right. Because whatever reason they got dis distracted and, and mindlessly living and all these things, non-intentional living, not understanding their purpose, and you get knocked and shocked. But but the good news is though, is that as long as you still have breath in your body, that can be changed oh, yeah. at the at the at the second that you accept Jesus Christ. Yeah. But a lot of time they gotta get there. Yeah. A lot of time they have to just yeah. get there. So I, that's it's what I kind of got from that. That's Ever. what I got from that, man. Yes, sir. You, that's good. Brother Charles, you got anything? Yeah, I, I hit it all. I'm, I'm good. Oh, around. that's what's... <laughs> go ahead. I think you have some scriptures that you want to share, Brother Dice? Knock and shot. Yeah, scriptures. That did me a lot of things. Yeah, me too. I'm going to do Romans... Uh, 3 and 23 for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and then I'm going to go back and do James 1 and 5 it says let any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and we, and it will be given to him Wow. Amen. Yeah. That's good, man. That's good. One thing, real quick. Go ahead. When God give you that wisdom and knowledge, you know it's not yours. So stop going back to your way, cause cause it's more comfortable and you can dress it up better. Just stick with what God has, you know, has directed you to do, and just allow allow His Spirit to take control. Right. Don't try to resist. It. You know, just just allow it. Allow it. Allow it. That's good, man. Good stuff, man. Oh uh, man, I enjoyed it today. Yeah, uh, yeah, we had we yeah. we at the midway point of the lesson, and we gonna and we gonna stop here, uh, and then we'll pick up on next week, uh, because this one that I think we need to finish it. Oh yeah, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we need to finish this one. Oh, um, I, I hope you guys who are watching and listening got something from this lesson. I know we did. I know I did personally. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, again, stop dropping worship. If you read the plan along with us, you'll notice that it is written in white letters with a red backdrop that's in an octagon shape like a stop sign. When you see a red stop sign, it immediately signals to your brain stop. that you need to stop and pay attention. So when we grew up early in life in our uh, elementary years, we learned the little cliche of stop, drop, and roll if we were found ourselves in a fire. Uh, well, to me, when they say stop, drop, and worship, they're trying to make that be second nature just like when you say oh, yeah. stop, drop, and roll. Yeah. Whenever you find yourself in, in trials and conflicts and possibly feeling uh, the, the, the beginning stages of depression or, yeah. uh, or the onset of worry, when you're starting to feel these, uh, these tendencies taking over you, rather than try to figure it out, remember the cliche again. The same one we remember when we was in school, but changed one of the words. Stop dropping worship. Right. If you worship right then, then you are right now, you are starting to say that my life is, is, is uniquely given to me. It's purposefully. And I have an assignment. And I don't want to be knocked, shocked, knocked and shocked. I don't want to be mindlessly living. Yeah. And while I'm going through this depression or this onset of depression or this beginning stages of depression, before I get too far, stop I'm going to stop dropping worship because... I know that if I'm in a state of depression, then God can't use me for what he has for me to do. And the enemy knows the same thing. And that's why he wants you to be in a state of depression where you're mindlessly living and you're feeling that you don't have any self-worth. So, again, man, it's a great lesson. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it real deal. It, it's great, man. Uh, uh, before, but we're going to end this today, man. Uh, please tag and share uh, to y'all's pages so y'all friends can watch it. Um, remember, it's not about being liked. It's not even about how people feel. As long as you make sure that whatever you say, you bring passion, you show respect, but most importantly, you keep it real. And that's Real Talk, Kingdom Discussions, episode 58 is in the books.
But you said you'd never leave me all alone. So even though I feel the hope is Right there, man. This is the part of the song. This is a whole lesson, right? 